All right, what's going on, you guys? Brian here, and this is my SmackDown Live recap for tonight's episode. And a lot to talk about, a lot to cover. Um, of course, yesterday was Crown Jewel, and that the whole situation what involving Crown Jewel event has a lot of effects on tonight's episode of SmackDown. For those of you that have been keeping up with the news, of course, um, on a multiple different wrestling websites, it was reported that a lot of the superstars have not made it back yet uh, from Saudi Arabia uh, due to technical issues involving their plane. Um, of course, like you know, guys like Brock Lesnar, Vince McMahon, they made it back uh, to the States on their own flights or on their own uh, uh Air, on their own planes and, and flights and stuff like that. But a lot of the people that were supposed to be a part of tonight's SmackDown broadcast were not there. Roman Reigns versus Baron Corbin, that did not happen on SmackDown tonight, as advertised. Revival defending the SmackDown tag titles against the New Day's Big E and Kofi and Kofi Kingston, that did not happen tonight. Bray Wyatt was supposed to be the special guest on Ms. TV even though Bray Wyatt yesterday at Crown Jewel became the Universal Champion, defeating Seth Rollins in a Falls Count Anywhere match, he was not there tonight. And it, so the effects of Crown Jewel and that whole situation changed what was happening, going to happen on SmackDown tonight. And it changed it in a very good way because we saw the buildup to the Survivor Series where it will be Raw versus SmackDown versus NXT as NXT tonight made a statement against SmackDown uh, on tonight's episode, and I'll get into that in just a moment. Uh, but let's talk about the show. Let me get in right into the recap. Uh, we started off with WWE Champion Brock Lesnar and his advocate Paul Heyman. They came out, talked about what happened at Crown Jewel, the the night before, how Brock uh, conquered King Velasquez. He then talked about Brock being angry about with Rey Mysterio for what happened after the match yesterday at Crown Jewel where Rey went after him with a steel chair. He then said, Heyman then would, would, would make it clear that Lesnar would be at Raw Monday night. He then said about that Vince told him that since Brock is contractually obligated to SmackDown and that Rey Mysterio would, was contractually obligated to Raw on USA, that would not be able to, that that would not happen. Heyman then would announce that effective immediately Brock Lesnar would quit SmackDown Live or yeah, Smack, Friday Night SmackDown on Fox and would be heading to Monday Night Raw to this Monday to get revenge on Rey Mysterio. So that basically clears up a little bit of confusion with the whole championship situation with Brock Lesnar being the WWE champion and Bray Wyatt now being the universal champion. That would leave Raw without a world champion since both Bray and Brock are on SmackDown. Now with Brock moving to Raw, with the WWE Championship, that kind of clears up some, you know, that confusion. And I couldn't be happier. I think that SmackDown deserves to have a world champion um, that's going to be there every week, or one, you know. So that was the opening segment on on SmackDown tonight. Uh, then we would see Heyman and Lesnar leaving um, the arena. Where and then they would pan to show Triple H and Shawn Michaels um, were at the building tonight. So that kind of gave you a bit of a clue of something was going to happen with those two uh, or something involving NXT since both of them, uh, Triple H, you know, created NXT and Shawn Michaels as far as like, you know, like, uh, what is it, trainer of NXT and stuff like that. And being a part of it, so so that was what that was what happened there. 
Then we would have the SmackDown Women's Championship on the line. Nikki Cross challenging Bailey. Uh, Bailey would pick up the win with the help of Sasha Banks, who was at her in or in her corner. After the match, Sasha is celebrating on the outside when none other than the current NXT Women's Champion, Shayna Baszler, would arrive. She would uh, throw Sasha into the post. She would then go after Bailey, knocking her down. She would knock Nikki Cross off the apron and then would turn her attention to Bailey again, hitting her and leaving her laying. And this was basically the start of the NXT invasion of SmackDown Live, as I mentioned before at the opening, that coming up at Survivor Series, it's going to be Raw versus SmackDown versus NXT. So it's not going to be Raw versus SmackDown. It's going to be Raw, SmackDown, and NXT going in, going head to head to head. So uh, Shayna Baszler made her presence known. Then in a backstage interview segment, uh, Sami Zayn was being interviewed. He was talking about NXT being there tonight. He said that if anybody, if any of the NXT guys was to step to him, there would be trouble. And when he would turn, when he turned around, who would be standing behind him? None other than than Matt Riddle and Keith Lee of NXT. Then Sami Zayn would try to kiss up to them, saying, "You oh, know, yeah, I'm I've been down with NXT since day one, and you know." And this and this and this. I actually have a shirt with, of NXT, an NXT shirt that I was that I was wearing, but I took it off because while I was driving, because I had a salad, I didn't want to get no uh, no oil on it. So then, Sami Zayn would start walking. He was like saying that he had the NXT shirt in his car, and Matt Riddle and Keith Lee followed him until. He ran off, and they chased after him. They would end up in the ring, and basically uh, Matt Riddle and Keith Lee would leave Sami Zayn laying in the middle of the ring. So um, then we would have uh, the Miz TV segment with the Miz. He then they announced that Miz was going to interview himself. Miz he came out wearing his wrestling gear, so I kind of figured. Watching it, I'm like, okay, he's going to be wrestling somebody. And he would talk about NXT and how, you know, what they were doing. And then who would come out? None other than Tommaso Ciampa, the Black Soul. Or, yeah, the Black, yeah, Black Soul um, of NXT, Tommaso Ciampa. He would come out, basically issue a challenge to Miz. Saying, you know, Miz is this, you know, talking about how Miz is everything that he's not and that he's, while well, he's, you know, acting up here on the main roster, he's wrestling and, and stuff like that. And he basically told Miz, bring the fight. Miz is like, you know, you and me right now, right here, right now. And that would lead to the next match which was Tommaso Ciampa versus The Miz. And Miz lost to, Tommaso, to Tommaso Ciampa via the fairy tale ending. And so Ciampa picked up, picked, up the, picked up the victory tonight over The Miz. NXT went up 1-0 against uh, SmackDown in matches. Um... Then we had, it was supposed to be Fire and Desire, Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville versus Carmella and Dana Brooke. But when Carmella was, um, music hit and music was playing, they would show to the, they would cut to the backstage area where NXT's Bianca Belair was beating up both Carmella and Dana Brooke by herself. Um, she would throw uh, Carmella over the equipment boxes or equipment cases. She would beat down Dana Brooke. Then Rhea Ripley and uh, Rhea Ripley's music would hit, and her and Tegan Knox would come out. 
and basically take Carmella and Dana Brooke's place. Not much of a match here. Uh, Carmella, or not Carmella, but uh, Rhea Ripley would get Mandy Rose to tap out to an inverted uh, Texas Cloverleaf submission. Um, one of the odd parts on this matchup was Sonya Deville and Tegan Knox were on the outside of the ring, and Sonya was going to um, was going to throw uh, Tegan near the commentator table, but Tegan would reverse it and wound up throwing Sonya over the over the announce table, and Sonya's boot hit Renee Young in the face. So uh, that was a bit of a scary moment there. Uh, then, um, one of the other segments um, backstage was with Triple H and Shawn Michaels and Daniel Bryan walking backstage. He would then see Triple H and Shawn. Basically, he, he cha- Daniel Bryan challenged um, Triple H to a fight. Triple H was like, no, uh, I forgot my gear. I don't have my gear. If you're looking for a fight, and they kind of played off like it was going to be Sean, because Sean was like taking off his jacket, but then he he like put it back on, saying it was too cold in the building, and Triple H is like, oh no, it's not going to be him either, and he would bring out, he would bring Adam Cole in, uh, and then Daniel said, that's fine, but let's do it right, Daniel Bryan versus Adam Cole for the NXT Championship. Adam Cole agreed, Triple H agreed, Daniel Bryan agreed. So that was the main event. Daniel Bryan versus Adam Cole for the NXT Championship. First time ever NXT title would be on the line on SmackDown Live, or on Friday Night SmackDown. Sorry, I keep calling it SmackDown Live because, you know, uh, it is what it is. I mean, they used to call it SmackDown Live when it was on USA. So uh, that was the main event. Pretty good match, uh, a real, a really good match. Uh, Daniel Bryan lost. It would take a super kick, a um, Panama Sunrise, and a last call to uh, finish off Daniel Bryan by Adam Cole. So that was uh, that was pretty much it. The other NXT superstars came out uh, to celebrate. Triple H got on the mic. Uh, Triple H and Shawn Michaels were at ringside for this matchup, um, and basically they got into the ring. Triple H was like, "We are NXT. You want to fight? We have. We're. You know. You have to gather an army in order for to get. You know. To do a. In order to fight, you have to gather an army." And he repeated the same thing that they all that they always say about NXT. We are NXT. So the first shot has been fired by NXT heading into Survivor Series uh, the 24th of this of November. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens these next couple of weeks leading up to that event. Um, will we see an NXT appearance on, on Raw Monday night? Will, will Raw and SmackDown be at NXT this Wednesday? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see, but my overall thought on this episode of SmackDown tonight was I thought it was really good. Um, Obviously, whenever things change for WWE, they always scramble to to put a show together, and they did a really good job with this one, so hats off to them for putting on a good episode tonight of SmackDown with NXT invading. So with that being said, this has been my SmackDown Live recap. As always, I am Brian, and thank you for watching.